Hello everyone and welcome to today's lecture. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be switching gears completely and we're going to be going with a new topic. The topic du jour is going to be working with page layout software, specifically Adobe InDesign. Uh, now for the objective of this, uh, I wanted to basically show everyone uh, elements that are going to come into play for the final project and pretty much get everyone prepared for that the best that I can. Uh, the good news in this software is as you have a working knowledge on how Illustrator and Photoshop work, working with InDesign is not going to be as troublesome. Now I have some elements here that will also help you with this assignment. Things like the uh, retention uh, brochure will help you with the design element of this. Uh, and these other ones are for extra practice. Now, I want to make sure this is very clear. These, uh, while they're meant for practice, they're not really meant to be used for the actual homework itself. I'm hoping that everyone here will get creative with that, but we'll talk about that in a second. So, uh, so with all this, the topics du jour is going to be an introduction to InDesign, uh, similarities and differences uh, compared to what the other software we've been using, Tips for better, more organized content. Uh, this will help a lot with the final project. Uh, we're going to make a uh, brochure. This will probably be in the second or third video. And uh, that's basically, again, the main topic du jour. We're going to be basically making a br brochure in these cases. So to give you an idea of what I'm going to be looking for, and I'll show this again when the video, when the video for that comes up, is uh, you're going to make a brochure that's similar to this. Now, this is a type of brochure that can be pr printed in a traditional 8x10 uh, printer. And the way this would be set up is it would be folded in threes. This would be page one, this would be page two, this would be page three, and over here we see the other side. So the way that this would work is uh, this area would be your cover, this area would have any kind of contact information, this area could have miscellaneous elements, and the areas inside, again, you have to consider that this is gonna be folded up in threes. And again, I'll review this when we get to the point. Uh, we need to uh, basically put all pertinent information uh, in here. So that's basically the long and short of what the assignment's going to be. And uh, the way you're going to be graded on this is uh, the uh, use the intro videos to get started, because I'll give you guys a, a chance to get started with this to give you an idea of how everything should be set up. Uh, use several pictures. Uh, so uh, basically you could just go online, find some pictures that'll help. That's pretty much it have a cover and a contact sheet, as I said before. Uh, the rest may be of your choosing. But again, I would strongly recommend using the retention uh, brochure to give you an idea on how to approach this. And then save it as a PDF and hand that in. And I'll show you how to uh, save this as a PDF once we get to that point. Now this is gonna be due a week uh, from today. I'll just double check my parts over here. So yeah, it's gonna be due a uh, week and a half from today, actually. So that's basically when you'd want to hand that in. Because, uh, again, we're going to actually start working on the final next week. But, again, more on that a little bit later. Uh, but if you have a good idea of how this works and all the stuff I'm going to be going over today, at least for the this part of the uh, final project, shouldn't be too bad. Now, you will be given quite a bit of time to work on this. Uh, so don't worry about uh, having to rush the final project. That's pretty much it. And, uh, but, we'll get, but we'll get to that another time. So let's take a look at the software du jour. Okay, so to get started, you can go to File, like the other softwares, New, and we're gonna go to Document. But heads up, you could also start as a book, but uh, we wanna go with Documentation at this time, just because that's gonna be more pertinent for what we're gonna be doing. Now, uh, you have some presets that are available right away. Uh, you probably wanna go with Print, and letter, because that's what's going to help us today. And um, we'll talk about just some of the stuff that we see here. Now, I'm just going to rename this practice. If you want to actually practice this on your own, you can name yours whatever you want. And I can type today, apparently. <laughs> and uh, now what we see here is basically the measurements. This is similar to what we've gone with before, but in most cases, it's going to start with a measurement called PICAS. Uh, again, you'll find this in more layout uh, projects. However, if you're not exactly too fond of that, you could always switch this to inches relatively easy to get an idea of how uh, well big or small your area is. 
Now I'm going to put the orientation on landscape because that's going to be similar to what we're going to be working with later on. So there we are. I'm going to make this two pages because I do want to make this a two page pamphlet. And we're going to start on one, obviously. Now, uh, the columns that we have here, uh, basically what this involves is how your areas are going to be set uh, separated. Now, this can be done here, and it also could be done in, in a, a little bit later as well, using the layout options over here. But we'll get to that. For now, I'd like everyone to just add three columns, like so. And we're going to hit Create. Now, before we go any further, I want to make sure we're all on the same page. So we're going to hit the drop down over here. And I'd like everyone to go into the Essentials Classic area, if you would, please. So again, top area, Essentials Classic. I'm already here myself, but I'm going to reset this so, so we could all be on the same page. And again, this area over here, really not necessary. So I'm going to use the little double arrow to the right that basically kind of closes in a bit. So that'll make a couple things a little bit easier and give us more space to work. Okay, now the way that this is set up, at least to get started, is you have your two pages here, page one, page two. And uh, if you ever want to basically focus on one page versus another, or basically uh, highlight an area, you can go to the pages area, and you can see which is page one and page two, and adjust when necessary. Although we're actually pretty good here. We're not going to get too uh, deep into this. We're basically going to be scratching the surface, so to speak, to be able to make some practical elements like uh, a pamphlet over here or a magazine layout for the final project. But again, more on that a little later. And uh, besides that, we also have options for layers in case we need that, although you can switch between layers and pages relatively easy. And uh, a lot of the tools that you're going to see over here are quite similar to what you've seen previously. Say, for example, uh, it has options for shapes, as you can see here, the rectangle tool. It has options for lines. That's going to be helpful a little bit later. It has a couple other options that we can play around with. I wouldn't get too deep into a lot of these, though, because some of these options, say, for example, like cutting or, sorry, the scissor or, and, or whatnot, uh, have options uh, for elements that could be put into web design. But we don't really want to do that today. We basically just want to get through this enough that we can do some basic work. Okay, so now that that's done, let's... Uh, move on to how we can fix things up if necessary. So what we see here is our little guides that can basically help us organize our area. Now, the reason why these exist is if you have a lot of text, you want to make sure that they're spread out evenly enough, kind of like what we have over here. And if you're doing a pamphlet, it helps everything stay a little bit more organized and neat. So that's one of the reasons why it's kind of helpful to have these. In our case, uh, we can uh, use this to basically put in text in one column and so on. So then we'll be doing that momentarily. Now, one thing that's going to be on the test that I wanted to go over right now is what would happen if you wanted to take page two and put it directly next to page one. Well, that's pretty simple. Uh, we can click and drag this upwards, but there's a little thing that we need to do first before we can click and drag this upwards. Uh, we need to actually set that up to happen because if I try and just click and drag it over, nothing's going to be happening. But if you right-click your page, and there's an option, uh, instead of turning this on, you'll actually be turning this little option off. It's called Allow Separated, uh, sorry, Allow Selected Spread to Shuffle. And you click this one over here, you turn that off. Now you should be able to click and drag that over. Oop. Where did I get the right one? Okay. Okay, so I got the wrong one. I apologize about that. Right click. It looks like 2000, uh, version 2000, they switched this up a little bit. That sometimes does happen. So allow document pages to shuffle. That actually sounds more accurate as well. So uh, once I turn that one off, I can click and drag this up. And you'll see the icon kind of change a little bit once it gets closer. Yeah, there we go. And the two pages are right next to each other. It sure as heck beats having to go between one uh, page to another. Uh, but there's going to be some situations where you might not have that option. But when you do have that option, it is actually pretty helpful. So, uh, yeah, so this is looking pretty good so far. Now, just one last thing that I want to show before we actually start adding content in here is uh, the layout. Um, 
again, I just want to show this uh, very quick because uh, I just wanted to show you just options that you might be able to use for later. You have the layout option over here. Uh, pages allows you to add more pages if necessary. Good news, we're not going to need to really add anything. The margins and columns is probably going to be more useful for you. Now, what this will do is it will allow you to add more columns if necessary. So if you accidentally made too few when you first got started, that can always be changed. And you can also use this to change up your margins if for some reason they end up being a little bit too big or a little bit too small. But what we have here should actually work out just fine. I'm going to hit OK. All right, so that's pretty much the long and short of just some of the stuff we've done previously. So let's actually just add a little bit of color to what we have here. So this is just going to be a very quick little thing we're doing. I'm going to use my shape that I have over here. And I'm just going to add one color going from the upper left to the lower right. And yeah, if I just double click over here, I can either use the color picker or if I hit the little drop down, I can choose any color over here. I'm going to choose blue. And I really don't need this to have an outline, so I'm getting rid of that. And I'm going to make another shape that's going to be white. Oop, before that, though, similar to other softwares, you definitely want to make sure you deselect first. And by the way, this is already put in my layer section over here. So there we are. And once again, I'm going to double click double click this area because this is where your fill is and I'm going to put this to paper yep there we are but the uh, ink I'm going to put that to none because I don't need that and if I want to copy this for the other side I can go to edit copy edit paste in place and again if I hold shift it'll go straight to the other side there we are so again, it's basically elements that you can use to dress up your view a little bit better. Okay, now that I have my background, so to speak, I can use the create new layer to basically make a new layer and lock up the previous one. So I don't accidentally move it without this, without me telling it. Okay, so seeing already what you could do with that. Uh, what I want to show next is uh, just how to make a title. So this is going to be uh, something that I'm going to do uh, relatively on the simple side. So I'm just going to use the text option over here and I'm going to click and drag from there to two columns. There is a reason why I'm doing this. A method to my madness, so to speak. I'm going to call this ID demo. And of course, I can use some of my options over here. So much what I did with Illustrator previously. I could use the font size to make this way bigger. Yeah, that's going to be neat to be like 60. And I'm going to put this in the middle like so. And yeah, if you double click the text, it'll let you adjust it. Today. There we are. Cool. So that's basically what I wanted to get for this. I'm just going to move this up a little bit so it's a little bit nicer. All right. So that's what you could do if you wanted the bigger text. Now, you could also add in text and use your guides to help by just clicking and dragging where you want this to start and where you want this to end. Uh, now, a little bit of a help uh, for what we're doing over here is I want to actually make sure that this column and this column are similar. Well, nice thing about this software is it does have similar options to other areas. For example, if you remember Illustrator and Photoshop and the guides, you can actually click and drag this area down until you want your text, sorry, your, where you want your text to start. So the, with this guide, it gives me a little bit of help with that. So now I can go to my text over here, just click and drag from this column over down to the other side, and I can let go. And uh, you'll notice that there's no text right away. If you want this to fill in with text similar to what you might remember with Illustrator, you right click and choose fill with placeholder text. Once again, very similar to its 
Illustrator counterpart. So give that a try if you can. Just basically try and fill this area up with just some random text if you can to just go all the way over here. And then once you've done that, try to do the same thing in the other column. Again, you're going to basically just click and drag from there to here. And then the third column, you're going to basically do the same thing, except you're going to uh, go to the very top anyway, and then just go all the way down. So this time, we're not going to use the ruler, we're just going to use the very top of here. Now, uh, we're going to add text into this area again. Right click, fill with placeholder text, bam. So, fantastic. Now, before we go any further, uh, there is a couple things I want to do uh, for the next part. Now, a neat thing about this software is, if necessary, we could actually take elements from one column and put them into the other so that it doesn't basically go outside this little box. Now, you could do that by uh, selecting the actual area that you want to take from one uh, area to another and basically just find the little white box at the lower right, give it a click. You'll see some text all of a sudden appears and then just go to the next column that we've made. Then do the same thing again. Just uh, click this little white box and then go to the next one. Now again, you have to make your text box, once again, by hitting the text area and just click and dragging to actually make the box you need. Now to demonstrate this, I am going to get rid of a couple of areas, uh, set elements over here. And I'm going to now right click, fill with placeholder text. And not only does this area get filled up, but the area next to it will as well. Now, again, this is going to be on your test, so I am going to show it again. But uh, give this a try. I mean, just again for your own education, just basically try to put in the text in here the best you can. And try to do it to three different columns. We'll do the next page momentarily. Okay, if you're still not done, which I would not be surprised about because I only gave you a couple seconds, uh, just take a moment to pause and try this out if you can. Otherwise, if you are finished, uh, we'll move on to the next te uh, step, and that is showing how to import images. Because uh, that could be a little bit of tricky business. So to import a picture, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to File, well, actually, even before we've put in the pictures, I'd like to take a moment to save what we have because I want to show you something quite important here. So I'm going to go into where my a folder saved, and I actually took the liberty to uh, make an, a little area called Bro Picks. And I'll actually show you where, where the other two elements are. So I'm just going to put these down. So I have an option for InDesign Practice. which I'm going to be using for the first part of the lecture. And I have bro picks for the next one. Yes, they are cats and dogs. This will make more sense a little bit later. OK, so getting back into here, I'm going to import one of the pictures. Now to do that, you go to File. And there should be an option that allows us to place our elements in here. Now, the reason why I stopped for a second is I wanted to make sure I was saving in the appropriate area. So I'm going to Desktop, and I'm going to InDesign Practice. And I'm going to put this in the same folder as my picture. So that's going to be the InDesign Practice folder. Now, something I would strongly recommend you do is when you are working with InDesign, that you keep whatever pictures you have in the same folder. So for example, Here's my two pictures. I'm going to put my InDesign folder in here. Here's the reason why. Later on, we're going to adjust a picture uh, a little bit more after the fact. I think we'll do that with a PSD file because I think that's going to make a bigger impact. But uh, the reason why we're doing it this way is I want to show you what happens if, again, you're working in a bigger pipeline and all of a sudden your editor or whoever is above you uh, decides that they want something changed. Nice thing about this software, it allows you to make changes without actually having to re-import your files. So, but uh, there's everything that I need. 
So let's place that file in here. So file, place, and we'll put the, the Photoshop file in here. Why not? We shouldn't have to actually change anything for now. So I'm just going to hit open. We'll try that again. File, place. Actually, even before I do that, I'm going to make sure that I just have the regular selection, nothing selected. A little bit of a safety precaution there. So this is my sunrise. Okay, I'm going to put this in this general area. Yeah, that should do it. Now it's going to be over the text. That's normal and okay. Now what we're going to be doing later is I'm going to show you how to wrap your areas around your text. Now I also wanted to show you a very important little feature when it comes to pictures. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see this better. Be cautious when working with pictures in this for multiple reasons. Uh, biggest reason is if you wanted to make your picture bigger, you have to actually take the little lattice that's around it and make that bigger first. And then you select the actual picture itself. You click the little circles we have in here. And now you should be able to actually scale this bigger and such. The reason why that's important is this little lattice that's around it if your picture goes beyond those borders, your picture will be cut off, as you can see here. So it's a little bit of a pain in the butt that this kind of exists, but it does have a practical purpose if you wanted elements to be a little bit of a distance from your uh, picture and so on, or if you need an area to be cut, the little lattice can help out with that. So let's say that we only want this part. No, that actually looks pretty nice. I'm happy with that. But uh, yeah, that is something you have to consider. And again, if you want to actually scale the main picture or move this game picture, you have to hit these two little circles and then move or scale however you need to. Actually, I'm kind of digging this look. I'm going to keep this. <laughs> Strange little happy accident sometimes. Okay, so... Again, if I wanted this to be adjusted or changed, I could actually go into Photoshop and fix that up. And I'll fix that up momentarily. So while that's loading up, actually my computer should actually get this up pretty quick. But, uh, oh yes. Uh, so I'm going to actually import the other picture in on this side. So I'm gonna go to File. Once again, place. I'm going to choose the AI example. And, oop, important safety tip, make sure that nothing is selected when you do that. So I had that little area selected, so when I tried to do the place, this area was selected, so it went straight in there. So really don't want that. Instead, I'm going to go to File with nothing selected. I'm going to go to Place. I'm going to choose the AI example. And I'm going to put this on the other side, like so. <laughs> nice. Now you're going to notice that the quality of this is not going to be that good, but that's okay because we can fix that up. Pretty much we're looking at this with, with just a minimal quality, which is the reason why it looks a little bit off in this case. But we'll fix that. Okay, so Photoshop is finally open. So I'm going to go to File. I'm going to go to Open. And once again, go to my desktop, go into my InDesign picks or practice. I'm going to open up my sunrise. But this is what I'm talking about. Now, before I go any further, I am going to save what I have. But this is one of the reasons why it's so important to make sure that all your pictures are together. Say that your client uh, likes the picture, likes the layout, but does not like how there's color here for one reason or another. They don't like color. They just want it black and white. Well, what I can do is I can go into my image and adjustments. I can choose the black and white option and it'll get rid of your elements like that. And just for the sake of, well, something, I'm going to turn up the brightness a little bit. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to hit OK. So now if I was to save what I have and save over what I currently have. You'll notice that if I go back to InDesign, my little picture now has a little 
triangle on top of it. Now the triangle that's here, because it was it definitely wasn't here before. In fact, if you need a little proof, if I go to my other picture, you'll notice it has these two little rings over here, meaning it's linked. But if I see go over here, I'll see a little yellow uh, triangle with an exclamation point, basically telling you that your image was modified. So if I click here, you'll see that your image gets modified immediately, basically helping you with the next task. So again, if that is something that you need to basically make a change, that's how you can do it. So I'm going to do the same thing for the other areas. Just going to add myself. I'm actually going to uh, bring this down. Oh, that is such an undo. So this one's text-wise, this is going to go down a little bit. But I'm going to go from the upper left to the lower right, similar to what I've done before. And I'm going to do the same thing up here. Just basically go to the upper left, lower right. And again, this is all from the text area. No holding shift in this case. And I'm going to actually add my text in ahead of time. So I'm going to select the black arrow, select the little shape that I have over here. Now, if you can, if you see text right away, that's not a problem. But it is one of those things to just kind of watch out for. Hit the white box, select the box next to it, select the white box. And again, the reason why I bring this up is if you select anything that's not a text box, you'll see a, a general icon that looks like this. But the moment you move this, you'll see that there's a little chain there. And that'll basically allow you to uh, take your text from one area and bring it to the other ones. So if I bring back my text, I go over here, right click, and choose the fill with placeholder text. Well, there's everything for you. Nice, neat, and ready to go. So that's pretty much some of the basics that you could do in terms of putting text. And as I said before, all this is going to be on the final. Uh, project. So hopefully you've taken notes or at least mental notes. Now, there's still some minor elements that we need to add and subtract. I think we still have enough time that we could add those in. Uh, first area that's a bit tricky is going to be what's called the uh, text wrap. Now you can find that by going to view, oh, sorry, window. And there should be an option called text wrap right over here. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to take the the uh, picture you have here and either keep it on normal mode which basically means there's no text wrap or it allows you to choose the wrap around binding box that's basically what that little apparatus that I was talking about that lattice apparatus is over here so if I select this your uh, text will go around that little binding box now if you want a little bit more accuracy say for example uh, you want Say the picture has like some has some elements that are see-through or whatnot, or might be round. That is something that potentially could happen. The third option is called wrap around object shape, and you can see that it bypasses that area. So even if I bring out the binding box quite a bit more, as I just did here, uh, Maya will not. Oh, sorry. Uh, InDesign will not listen in this case, and that's a good thing. Now, if you need to get a little bit more control, you can go to an option called your contour areas. Hit the drop down, choose the detect edge, and then you can use this option over here. This is called the top offset to push out your text a little bit more. You'll see a little icon all of a sudden appear. So if you don't want your text to uh, start working immediately, this is a very important tool to kind of keep in mind. So that's pretty much the long and short of what I wanted to show with the text wrap. So once again, normal mode, which is right over here, basically teaches, treats the text as normal or no text wrap. The second one wraps around the bind, bounding box that's over here. The third one, and the only one that you really need to keep track of, is the wrap around object shape. So if this is a more complex shape, you'd notice a way more of a difference, but it's relatively simple, so don't worry about that, at least for now. And uh, this little icon over here, dictates how close or how far 
your elements are. So give that a try if you can, because again, that is going to be on the test. Again, just go to Window, Text Wrap, and that should bring it up. Now what we'll do next is uh, we're going to add a, uh, some other minor details to our InDesign project. One, and they're going to be two, they're going to be minor elements. So like we just added uh, text wrap to an object. Now we can add elements like an underline. So I'm going to move this up a little bit to help with that. And how to add what's called a drop cap. So just uh, again, give it a moment or two for everyone to wrap up or take a moment to pause the video so you can basically uh, do some of the stuff we've just done here. And I'll assume that you were able to do some of those elements. So uh, the next part, and again, this is a minor thing, but it is going to be on the test. That's what I want to show you is you can add in what's called a drop cap. Now, this is one of the reasons why I wanted Essential Classics, because you'll see all the different elements over here that you could do in terms of organizing the actual columns and such. Things like using the alignment, uh, any kind of bleeding. But the one that we're going to be using is what's called the drop cap number of lines. So again, Essential Classic, drop cap number of lines. Now, if you don't go all the way over here, it may, might mean your screen might be a little smaller. This is an issue that sometimes happens with laptops. It's normal and okay. But if you, uh, but again, you probably could just click and drag that area to be able to see this. Worst case scenario, you could always, let's see, we're taking a look over here. You potentially could use either a properties element to be able to help with this, but I'll be honest, if you could actually see it over here, that would be best. Now, again, what the drop cap does is if I make this hot bigger, it basically makes that little part over here a little bit bigger. Now, that seems like it's not that big of a deal, but check this out. If I was just to try to make that bigger using the font size, it basically would mean that all this text down here would be pushed down. In this case, we really don't want that. We just want to go to our little drop cap over here, make that bigger for whatever, to grab the attention of the audience. That's why we have it here in the first place. But that's pretty much it, at least for the drop cap. Okay. Now, uh, to add an underline, similar to what we did previously in other softwares, we can use the line tool. Click and drag this from left to right. I'm holding shift while I'll do this, by the way. Using the black arrow, I could select this and basically make this line as big as I need to. Again, when it comes to spreading out the text, this is going to be a huge help when you're doing that. So just take a moment, try to do some of the stuff we've done online already. Uh, wait about five seconds and move on to the next task. Okay, now what we're gonna do next is uh, we're going to actually edit some of the text that's in here. Just a heads up, one of the reasons why uh, the placeholder text exists is so that anyone who might be working on design can basically set up the design without needing uh, the actual text from the writer, him or herself. So, uh, so in this case, uh, that's basically how this is all set up. But that being said, you need to make sure that there's no text that's kind of going beyond a certain point. Now, if your text is working right, then you should see no plus that's over this. It basically is telling you that your text went in perfectly and there's no areas that are kind of hanging off or anything like that. Now, if you go over here, you'll notice that there's a little X. That's basically telling you that there is some elements that kind of went off the page and so on, and it would be a good idea to fix that up. And again, this is gonna be on the test. So to basically clean this up, you go to around the area where your column begins to end. So I'm gonna double click here. I'm gonna right click. And there should be an option here called Edit in Story Editor. So what this will do is it'll allow you to take a look at your text without everything else that's over here. But more importantly for us, if I go to Edit in Story Editor, you will see that your 
uh, it, where the text ends, which in this case it's Akas, I guess that's a word, but anything past Akas is not seen, and this tells you. This is basically what's called the overset. So if I click and drag this whole area, it'll get rid of all those extra elements. And if you don't see overset over here, that basically means you have just the right amount of text to work with. I can close this up. And again, you'll see that this area has no little marking down here, basically saying that this is ended properly. And that's basically what you want. Now, I think that's most of what I wanted to show, at least for now, uh, at least in terms of creating new content. Uh, now, there's just some last elements I wanted to show that potentially could be useful uh, for what we're going to be doing for the next assignment. Uh, so if you want to basically get a better idea of what this is going to look like in terms of when you actually export this out, this is what you do. You can go to uh, View, and there's two options that you can take advantage of. One is called Screen Mode. The other one is Disformance display performance. Now what the screen mode does is it'll basically keep this in an almost preview like quality. Of course, if you actually go to preview, anything that's a picture might temporarily go away. So you got to be careful about that. But it is still there. So if I go to once again to uh, view, sorry about that. Go to screen mode and I'm just going to put this back. Oh, actually, I, I apologize. This is what you see here is going to be the actual version that's going to be exported out. So I'm just going to backpedal a bit. So screen mode, if you want to see what it's going to look like or really look like when it goes out, put in preview and that'll basically do the job. Now you can also go to view, the sport performance display, and you'll see that right now it's basically in mid uh, quality. That's one of the reasons why this area over here looks a little pixelated. But if you go to high quality, your pictures and your text start to become a much more of a high quality look to them. Or in other words, basically the look that you originally intended. This is a good thing to turn on. Both of these things are good to turn on if you want to see how this is really going to look before handing this in. So again, if I go to view and I go to screen mode, I go to preview, this is what your actual document is going to look like. And it actually looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. And then view and performance display. This basically shows the quality of the image itself. So that's pretty much the long and short of what I wanted to show over here. So let's actually wrap this up because I'm good. I'm, I'm happy with this. So I'm going to go to file and I am going to... I don't think save as will get us what we need. Nope, that's okay. So if I'm changing this to a PDF, I can go to File, and going down my list, I should be able to actually hit Export. Yep, PDF Print, that's exactly what I'm looking for. It's already going to InDesign Practice. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to keep that practice for now. But now, if, yep, and just going to keep the quality as is, and Export. So now, if I go back to my InDesign photos, I'll see that there's a practice PDF here. And here it is. So that's how you can export, not just as a PDF, but you can also export this as almost any other type of file. So you hit the drop down, and there's all the different files you can export this as. You can export these as regular images. You can even export these as, as HTMLs, it looks like, which is actually kind of neat. But I wouldn't worry about that too much now. Um, it's already saved, so I don't really need to save it. But I am going to save it over here for my own purposes. So file, save as, and I'm going to call keep this practice and just hit save. Again, it's it pays to save every so often. Okay, so that's pretty much what I wanted to show in this for now. Uh, the second video, I'm going to show everyone how to approach the assignment uh, this week, which is going to be uh, the brochure. So hopefully you'll find that a lot of the tips I'm going to be giving you here uh, will be helpful for that particular project. And that's pretty much the long and short of everything. The next video, I'm hoping, won't be quite this long, but do be prepared. 
But that's pretty much it for now, so let's go on to video two.